today we begin our series on how Apple is evil. This probably sounds ironic, and it kind of is, because I am a user of Apple products. I started using Macs back in 1992 and have used them ever since. But my admiration for their products and appreciation for how well they work is kind of the silver lining in a cloud of price gouging, tone-deaf product development, and corporate arrogance that often goes from insulting to offensive. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest, it hurts. Ooh. Today, we're going to begin where it hurts the most, their pricing strategy, market positioning, price gouging, whatever you want to call it. You know, just, just pick your own name. If this is your first time here, then like and subscribe and come back and see me for the rest of this series and more. Much appreciated. Commercial over. Apple has mastered the art of bleeding cash from their customers using a pricing model that always leaves one critical piece of the perfect computer out. But for just a little bit more money, or a lot more money when they get down to it, you can get that perfect thing if you just move a model up or add it on or something like that. The base models of the Apple products are really just the floor models. They're eye candy to get you to step into the store. And then, well, then they've got you. I would say that Apple's just as bad as a car dealer, but at least when you go onto a car lot to buy a car, there's some wiggle room in there. You can negotiate <laughs> and haggle with them. Apple is also, and I think this, this works in their favor, a confusing mess of contradictions. Their iMac Pro brand new seriously professional grade computer is completely non-user upgradable. The 27 inch iMac that's geared toward the average consumer at least lets you upgrade the RAM yourself, saving hundreds of dollars over what Apple would charge you for that same RAM. But the professional model, the iMac Pro, you gotta get what you want or forever hold your peace. These are the kind of contradictions that make Apple, Apple. Apple giveth, Apple taketh away. <laughs> Don't try and figure any of this out. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to what they do. I think it's just all part of the scheme. Apple lives in a bizarro world where they giving the customer less is the goal. And the customer needing more is the punishment, at least to the customer's wallet which is good for Apple. Apple are the masters of the upsell. Like I said, they make products just good enough, but missing one essential element that would make your new machine just absolutely perfect. You can see this across their product lines. And here's the thing. It's not like Apple is just saying like, oh, you need more RAM? Okay, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll charge you a little bit extra. They're not only upselling you for more RAM or more storage or a better chipset or whatever, they upsell you the extra stuff and then they grossly, exorbitantly overprice it. You just get, you just get bent over by the time you're done buying an Apple product. This is what's known as the Apple tax. Anywhere else, it would be called what it is. Price gouging. Let's take a second to define that term just so we're all on the same footing. We all have the same understanding of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about price gouging and how it applies to Apple. Price gouging, as defined by Wikipedia, is a pejorative term referring to when a seller spikes the prices of goods, services, or commodities to a level much higher than is considered reasonable or fair and is considered exploitative potentially to an unethical extent. Every product Apple sells is an exercise in bait and switch. At first, the base model, it looks just perfect. But then when you look closer, you see that one thing is missing, whether it's RAM or storage or upgraded CPU. And if you just had that, the machine would actually be perfect. And then once you get that, you've talked yourself into the upsell. You know what you need your computer for, and you know what you need in order to do that thing. Nobody has to say a word. And the more you think about it, the more it seems like you need all that stuff. 
until you've added everything on and you have to like splash yourself with cold water and come back and do it all over again. This is the Apple truth. The only thing that's stopping you from getting it all is how much money you can actually get into your hand to pass across the table to the Cupertino con men. And unlike the car salesman, they never have to say a word. It's like some sort of arcane art. I just, it amazes me that it happens. It's gotten to a point where buying an Apple product is, is kind of like an event. You want your event to be perfect and so you want to have all the stuff. It's like a wedding or something where you just have to have you know, three ice sculptures or something and if you want that stuff you got to pay. Let's look at my recent purchase of a MacBook Pro 15 inch. After months of searching for a PC laptop that would help my video making workflow, I finally realized that I just couldn't get there with a PC and I needed a MacBook Pro. But here's the rub. The base 15 inch model comes with a 256 gigabyte SSD, which I know from experience is way too small for anybody who's even a semi-pro user. So I immediately thought, oh geez, I wanna get to 512. That costs extra 200 bucks. Then you start thinking like, well, 512 is still pretty small. One terabyte would be great. One terabyte costs you, instead of $2,400, $2,999. And yet, when buying Apple products, you talk yourself into doing it. The completely maxed out version of the MacBook Pro 15 inch with upgraded CPU and GPU and two terabytes of SSD rolls off the lot at $4,200. If you're keeping track at home, that's an extra $1,500 for storage, small CPU bump of 2.9 to 3.1 gigahertz, and two terabytes of storage. Some of you are probably out there saying, but there's the uh, the design and the research and development and all the blah, 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 yeah, and the giant space headquarters. Okay, whatever. Let's talk about that design. Let's start with the current port selection on the current Pro laptop offerings. Four USB-C to Thunderbolt 3 ports. That's all. It does help with that clean, minimalistic vibe that Apple is so well known for and makes your desk look so pretty, but it puts the consumer in an even tougher spot after they've made their purchase. When I bought the MacBook Pro, I found there were myriad hidden costs just to get set up and running in my studio with this new machine. If you make video, audio, whatever, you've got stuff. You have to find a way to get all that gear hooked up. USB-C might be the port of the future, but almost everyone has peripherals that require the ports of the past. I have an audio interface, hard drives, streaming peripherals, and all kinds of other stuff that I need to connect. And it wasn't practical to just plug all those things in every time I wanted to get down to work. The best way I found to solve this problem required spending quite a bit of money as well. What I did was I bought a Thunderbolt 3 docking station. I went for one from a company called Pluggable and it cost about $250. I needed more storage. So I bought a 500 gigabyte Samsung T5 external SSD to work from. That was $150. Then I bought an eight terabyte Western Digital Easy Store hard drive that was on sale for $150. I used that for Time Machine. And then I bought a four terabyte G drive to store all of my audio recording projects and the video stuff that I make goes over there once I finish a project. For what I do, that was the bare minimum of what I needed to set up an efficient workflow and keep my data safe. So the grand total of my purchase of a MacBook Pro comes to $2,400 plus tax and over $600 in peripherals. There's the hidden Apple tax. Even if you don't upgrade like I did, the $2,400 MacBook Pro becomes a $3,000 MacBook Pro. There are concrete reasons why people would choose a Mac over a PC. Uh, if you use Mac creative programs like uh, Logic Pro or Final Cut, then you need a Mac. Yes, you can build a Hackintosh, but I tried to build a Hackintosh <laughs> and I need to do work that's not work on the computer, but work with the computer. 
And I spent an entire day building a Hackintosh that never quite got off the ground. So, you know, if you have spare time and you, and you treat it like a hobby, Hackintosh is probably pretty great. But I don't have that kind of time because I want to make these videos and I want to get them out and I want to see my family and I want to, you know, sleep. This kind of illustrates exactly how much of a boondoggle buying into the Apple ecosystem and paying that Apple tax can be. They've built, as they say in the business world, the perfect, elegant mousetrap. And we'll pay whatever they ask for them. Because that's what we've been trained to do. We're, you know, every time a new Apple product comes out, we're like Pavlov's dog. We just got to get to the water. Just try and go on Apple's website and build the perfect computer for yourself. You know, right after this video is over. See how long it takes you before you've almost doubled the original cost of the machine that you chose. And hats off to you, Apple. You are a money printing machine in the guise of an electronics manufacturer. It seems there is no stopping you on your way to becoming a trillion dollar company as long as, and I'm, I'm not going to bet on this, you know, the odds are probably not good, but as long as you can sleep at night knowing that you're extorting your customers. But I would imagine that billions of dollars of profit <laughs> probably make for a pretty comfortable bed ticking. As for us consumers, well, if we want Apple products, we got no choice but to pay what they ask. And even though I hate it and it, it really ticks me off, you and I, we just have to deal with it. Apple is evil. Stay tuned for part two of Apple is Evil, which comes to you next week. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, then hit that button. Give this video a thumbs up to show the gods of YouTube and their algorithm that you approve of what I've done here. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate it. My name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. Until the next time, I'm out.